Hello and welcome to News Up Now. We are back in San Francisco. Yes, we are. So I'm here with Gardenia. So what do you think about your first Sundance Film Festival? Well, it was stressful. It was cold. <laughs> I came back a little sick. But it was magical. Just like us working as press, going back and forth through, you know, the city, with our equipment, doing the interviews for you guys. I think it was a great experience, and we definitely will go back again for yes. another round of music now. 2021. Yes, 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 we yes, will. yes. We yes. will. Yeah. So, um, what was the highlight for you? Ooh. I'll go first. Yes, go first. So for me, the highlight was uh, seeing so many people on the street, on the main street. I mean, the town. Uh, it doesn't have. It not only have eight thousand people, it's like residents. Yeah, of course. So when bring over a hundred thousand to Park City, and uh, to me was like a, was like blown my mind away. Yeah, it was just huge seeing people like movie uh, fans, uh, musicians, actors, directors, filmmakers. It was just fun. It definitely was. I think for me the biggest highlight was when you're interviewing a director or a filmmaker and you actually watch the film and you're asking questions about the film and they actually tell you, wow, you saw my, 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 my project. And they get so excited. And also another highlight for us, I think, was doing the interviews at the Egyptian Theater. A lot oh, of yes. people don't know this, but the Egyptian Theater is the landmark of Sundance Film Festival. That's the place where they filmed the first film of the festival when it first started. So for us to be pressed and to go for a first year and have access to interview people there, it was the icing on the cake. So that was a major highlight for so me. So speaking of interviewing people on that theater, in that theater, uh -huh. so you had some interviews over there. One of our highlights was that we were able to interview the director of the film A Thousand Cuts, including world-famous journalist Maria Reza. Here's what she had to say about their fight to continue the freedom of the press against President Duterte from the Philippines. To me, all my films are examinations and really both um, trying to understand what's happening in the Philippines right now. Um, and so in order to understand, I think you have to bring both sides in, right? Just to understand why President Duterte is very popular still. I think you have to, under then you have to get access to the people who are very close to him, like he's part of his inner circle, like the general, you know, Bato is in the film. This is the 34th year that I've been a reporter and it, I have never lived through anything like this. I didn't set out to be anti-Duterte or anti-government. I did my job, right? And now, just by doing your job, you can get assaulted on social media. You can, in my case, I could go to jail for 83 years, you know? So it's a different time. It's pivotal. I think it's an existential moment, not just for journalists, but also for democracy itself. So that's very interesting, and I love the theater. It's a beautiful theater. Definitely. Yeah. So another movie for me, and I think a lot of people are talking, I don't think the press like it very much, which is um, The Collisionaire. Yes. With uh, Gina Rodriguez and Richard Jenkins, uh, directed by Miranda. And that's her first uh, feature movie. That's what she, what she has to say. Oh, it's like... Um... It's like free money or something. Like there's something like you just, uh, you have these expectations that you're like very determined to get and then they just kind of shoot right past them. You know, they're like, yep, I can do that. And, and, um, and that's just, um, uh, just so joyful. The thought of going, you know, the rest of my life and not knowing Miranda July, after I met her, I thought, oh man, that would have been bad because she was amazing. It was incredible. So that was uh, Richard and the director so what do you think? I mean, we, we didn't get Gina Rodriguez to talk to us. Unfortunately, we didn't. Yeah, yeah. She, um, was, she was she, busy talking to somebody she, from Gucci. She was busy, you know, taking selfies with her friends. And as a press, you know, it was quite disappointing because we were all waiting there for her. And, yeah. you know, she, you know, she knew we were there. Yeah. So um, another movie which um, I got to interview the director and also one of the subject of the movie. Of the, it's a documentary. Um, uh, called Church and the Fourth Estate, uh, which talks about the uh, Boys Scout in America and then mm -hmm. also the Mormons. It's pretty interesting. It was really, um, how can I say, sad, but also at the same time, give some freedom to some people who went through that, uh, like sexual uh, abuse. abuse. Yeah. So I think um, what I noticed when I was talking to him was um, he was so open about mm -hmm. and so strong and yes. I asked him 
where that like that the strength came from and here's what he has to say i've not always been this brave some people are like nope nope not gonna tell them a thing <laughs> i think part of me too i th i think what happens with victims too yeah i was sexually abused when i was uh young and i was sexually abused at scout camp and they, they did cover it up they you know they were sexually abusing uh this this guy was sexually abusing other boys it, the, the, the normalcy, the thing that just blew my mind is when I started to talk to these other boys, that was my way of coming to terms with what was happening to me. I just looked a little deeper and, and uh, eventually found Adam and did an interview with Adam and I understood pretty, pretty um, quickly that the courage that I, you know, of his interview and, the, and um, just the courage he had in coming forward to talk about this, these issues uh, and just the, the sort of brutally honest way that he was that that he was talking about his experience, uh, I realized pretty quickly that this is a film about him. Look, I love this documentary. It's just so real, so mm -hmm. powerful, and I really hope this documentary comes to the Bay Area because you guys can watch it. Um, you speaking of watching, you watch another movie. In, yes, in I Spanish. actually did watch it before Sundance. I did my yeah, homework good like work. a good journalist. And I was, I had the pleasure to interview at the red carpet on the Egyptian theater again, the, the full cast of White Summer, Blanco de Verano, which is a new premiere debut for the Spanish cinema. And in the conversation, this film is about, you know, a close relationship of a boy and a mother and what happens when the boyfriend comes in the picture. So unfortunately, we had a little audio situation with our footage. But there, we do have the article written down. Of, of course, it's of on newsofnow.com. You can watch it. But this movie was intriguing for me because how she was raising her son. It was, it was like um, being naked in front of the sun. All sort of thing was like, uh, And the best bit, part was know. that the actress, um, she said she's not even a mother, but she portrayed being a mother so well. Exactly. Um, and then a newcomer actor, Adrian Rossi, which plays the main character, Rodrigo, um, while speaking with him, he's only 16, he was very, you know, happy to be at Sundance, and the whole interview was in Spanish, and I can see him being the next guy at Garcia. He was that phenomenal. So it was a great interview. I'm mm -hmm. excited for, you know, White Summer to come to San Francisco, so stay tuned for that one. And I can see that film going to the Oscars with wow. the way it was presented. Impressive. It was well-directed. well, well wow. written, well directed. Okay, well, is that it? And... Ah, there's much more. And and I also was able to write a few articles on reviews on a couple movies, including White Summer and Mucho, Mucho, Mucho Amor, which is the story of the famous Walter Mercado, which we all grew up listening to our horoscopes every day at 5.45 p.m. Um, perks of being press is we did get the experience to watch a couple P&I screenings, which are press and industry screenings, in which we pretty much got to watch privately some movies. We could take notes and... I'm very thankful for that experience, but one movie I highly suggest to keep an eye on is Mucho Mucho Amor. You will enjoy it, and it will just remind you of your childhood growing up with Walter Mercado. So that's our wrap, right? That's oh, all. Yeah, yeah. That's all we got for Sundance this year? Yeah, that was pretty good, eh? We survived. It was cold. It was our first time in the snow, so... It was it was a great experience. Um, I fell a couple times, but it was a great experience. <laughs> oh yes, a couple falls and <laughs> a couple bruises and a little cold. But... You know, another thing, uh, if I may say so, um, mm -hmm. the highlight for me was going to that after party on Main Street. I forgot the name of the club. Oh, the Leo John the party. DJ. Yeah, Leo, Leo John. John. Oh, oh my God. gosh, I love him so much. And thank you for being uh, invite me to that yeah. party because I really like it. I mean, I grew up. Um, listening music is from the 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. To me, it was like a, a deja vu. Yeah. It was really cool. I was able to pull some strings for that party because yeah, it was hard was. to get in. But we were able to get in. And I mean, I think for our first Sundance, it was a wonderful experience. I honestly can't wait to go back. And I think like for us, everybody kept asking us, are we going to party hard? And we actually didn't. We just yeah. partied the first night. After that, we were in a rove, in our cabin by 9 p.m. working for you guys. So yeah. thank you for believing in us, and we can wait for next coverage for next year. Absolutely. Years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome to San Francisco. Yes. If you guys have any questions, suggestions for us, email us at tips, tips at newsupnow.com. And also follow us on Twitter. It's right here. Her personal, my personal News Up Now. Instagram. F Facebook. Yeah. Everything. YouTube. 
you know, just send us questions. And if you guys see us doing swing coverage at any film festivals, don't be shy. Yeah, come say talk hi. To us. We'll talk take to we'll, us. we'll give you a high five or we'll probably take a selfie. Okay, high five and see you next time. Thank you guys. Ciao.